first fight. Both of these guys are naturally 155ers, but agreed to a catch weight of 175. They seem pretty well matched Jordan up in hit terms him. of weight. Him. Big shot behind the ear. Definitely rocked him. What do you know about these two fighters, Kelly? Well, Justin's a very, very good wrestler, a very strong wrestler. Jordan's very athletic, well-rounded, but more of a striker. Um, but like I said, they're both they're both 55ers, and they agreed to fight at a catch weight of 175, so it's really hard to tell what somebody's conditioning is going to be like, the strength, when they're fighting it pretty close to their walking weight. If they stay on the ground, who do you think has the upper hand? Well, the upper hand's definitely got to go to Weaver. Weaver's a very, very good wrestler. Uh, but Jordan's wrestled. Jordan's a good athlete. He knows. He's just not at the wrestling level as Weaver. But it's also hard to say if that shot, you know, with that big shot Jordan landed, Weaver could still be seeing stars. V Hill took a few powerful hits right there in that exchange. Yeah. He seems to be standing tough with it, though. So both guys are very, very tough. They're very evenly matched up. We are actually looking at these guys uh, for a 55-pound bout in March, but they agreed to fight at the catch weight here, so we took it. But Jordan... I was going to say, I was just about to say, Jordan needs to get to work and not lay there. Uh, Weaver's very powerful, and he, he's going to lay in his guard. He'll land, he'll land some big bombs from inside your guard. Are there any advantages or disadvantages to being the first fight of the night in an event like this? Um, it's actually, you know, it's the individual fighter. You know, some of them don't like to be first. Some of them like to be first. I want to get it over with. I don't want to sit and wait and be nervous. Other guys want it don't want to be the first because their nerves are so high they're afraid it might affect the performance. But I think that would be a fighter-by-fighter fighter question, you know. Well, Jordan's these guys have a few fights under their belt. Holy cow. Jordan was trying for an arm bar to maybe switch to a triangle there, but he just didn't have it. And this is where you're going to start to see Weaver's wrestling prowess. You know, he's going to stuff that. He's going to try to work. It's hard to see what he's from this angle what he's work, working for, but... He may be trying for an inverted triangle. And that is what he's trying to do. Jordan wants to just drive in and walk around him. 10 seconds left in the round and should be a good save. And some good elbows in yeah. at the end of first round here. Which is very, very smart for him to do that at the end of the round like that and score, it scores very high in the judges' minds. It sh a lot of times the judges remember what they last seen, unless there was some dominant big bomb that they seen. Sometimes those uh, strikes right at the end can really benefit a guy for score-wise with the judges. It'll be interesting to see how they come out in round two after both of them really taking some Pretty massive hits to the head and to the body. Yeah, you know, it's really hard to say as a judge, uh, you know, and as a former fighter, former judge, how I would score that. Um, <laughs> Obviously, Jordan landed the big bomb that dropped Justin. Uh, I have that really evenly matched, you know. Uh, Justin's controlled the ground, but Jordan controlled the stand-up, and when when Justin did get Jordan down, he didn't really do anything. A little bit of damage, landing some punches, but just really kind of a lay and pray style. But it's hard to say. The guy just fought September 14th, you know, wow. so who knows what his conditioning's like. I mean, he's obviously he's a specimen physically, and he's a very good athlete. It seems at this point that they still have, uh, both of them still have a bit of energy. Yeah. Hill Jordan landing lands another big right, right hand, and, and, and Jordan seems to have the focus, but he wants to make sure he's got head movement coming in on the wrestler, you know, because because Weaver can throw a big heavy right. Most wrestlers have one heck of a heavy right hand. Weaver as got you can a see, left that's what that's there. what Justin's trying to do is counter that big right that Jordan's trying to throw. But Jordan Jordan Vihill's got. Very, very good power in his hands. He just has to make sure 
he's moving his head, not absorbing that punch as he comes in. Billy Jordan wants to be you know, pushing on that head, pushing away, get off that cage. If because all Justin has to do is drive him into the cage, and we have Weaver go. in the black shorts go. and V Hill in the blue shorts. Let's again, V Hill needs to have a little more head movement. You know, he needs to instead of just throwing straight and leaving his head in the middle. Because that's all, Weaver's just trying to land that big bomb. I mean, he feels confident with his wrestling, so he just wants to land the big bomb. Yeah. Jordan's Jordan's trying from the armor, guillotine, right? and he's got that tight. He's got that tight. That's very tight. Definitely working on but, that lock nope, and Ju got pulled out. Justin's out. Justin's too strong of a wrestler at this level to probably fall for that. But he works for a triangle. Nice transition. It's a very nice transition by Jordan Sloan. Some very good jujitsu skills. And that's he's trying, he wants to work that arm across Justin's body so he can use that arm to choke out Justin. It appears that V Hill doesn't really have a problem fighting on his back at no, this not, point. He's not at all. Seems like it feels comfortable down there. Yeah, he's, Jordan. Jordan has underrated jujitsu skills, but even if a guy with average jujitsu, if you catch a guy trying to land heavy bombs, he tends to leave his hands behind, catch it in an arm bar or a triangle. But some, when you're, another thing to think of, when you're in those submissions, you spend a lot of energy holding on to those submissions too, so who knows how much energy Jordan used. At this point, it looks like they'll be going to round three unless something dramatic happens here in the next couple seconds. Right. Justin's still in the, er, Weaver is still in the final seconds of the round, but really, you know, control throughout the round, I would give both rounds to Jordan at this point. Like I said, conditioning comes into play when, uh, when guys that normally fight at 55 choose a 175 catch weight. A lot of times conditioning can come in the factor. You know, a lot of these guys are used to fighting at a lighter weight. You know, maybe they don't have, they, they put in a lot of cardio to cut that weight as well. So where they're taking a catch weight that's very close to their walking weight, we don't know what kind of physical cardio shape they're in. Round three seems to be uh, an excellent test, as you said, of endurance, of cardio, of, of their training. And like you mentioned, having to come up in weight, that's got to be more difficult than coming down in weight right. in terms of endurance. Right, in terms of endurance, absolutely. And with two guys that are this evenly matched, getting to the third round, I, I expected it to go to the third round. I expected this fight, a decision. But the, like I said, the conditioning was going to be the question cardio-wise. Definitely no physical problems in their conditioning they're both specimens Jordan just needs more head movement he's he's got to move his head Vigil has uh, taken a few shots to the right side of his face some lefts from his opponent starting to show a little bit uh, Jordan caught a good one there that rocked him that hurt him but he's not moving his head and that's what's leaving it wide open for for Justin just to land those heavy bombs You can definitely see that fatigue starting to set in. Well, and, and the, what's an advantage for Jordan is Justin's also tired, so he's taking a little bit off his punches. You know, if he had landed those in the first round, they would have had a lot more steam on him. But, you know, Justin's a little tired too, so not he doesn't have all the power on his punches like he would have in the first round. Probably not where Vigil wants to be no. this late in the fight. No, and there he should have he should have went to guard instead of allowing Justin to take his take him from the side. So the full mount when you're tired, that's a tough one to defeat.
And what makes it tough is Justin's got the mount. Jordan's tired. I mean, it's tough to fight a guy off that's when you when you're physically drained and they can just you know grapevine your legs out like he does. And then Jordan needs to do something. About a minute left in the final round here. You right, can definitely see long, the fatigue setting in, and this is going to be, as you're about to say, I imagine, a long 60 seconds for V Hill. Absolutely, that's a very, ground. that's a, you know, a minute doesn't sound like much, but when you got a guy laying on top of you, that's a lot. You're already tired. Now you got, and everything he drops comes with thunder. Jordan needs to get a leg flat and keep Justin from grapevining and hooking his legs like that. If you had to score the fight right now, Kelly, where would you put it? Well, I scored the first two rounds for, for Jordan, but the last one for sure, I mean, this has been pretty much all Justin. But in the judges' eyes, was it a 10-8 round? I have 10-9, 10-9 for Hill, and then 10-9 to potentially 10-8 for Weaver. Uh, so you could be looking at a split decision, a majority decision. I don't think I don't think you'll see a unanimous decision. for your 